The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to the special OA Now football preview show. This is the blue edition. I am Sammy Termina, blogger of Around the OA, host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminas on Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube and also those watching on Oriented with Television. We got five teams to talk about in the blue division. Of course, we previewed the gold last week. We're going to have the white next week and the red in two weeks. So what's, without further ado, let's introduce the teams in the Blue Division for the upcoming 2023 season. It, first, we have the Raiders of North Farmington. When you look at the Raiders last year, this team really struggled. And it was shocking to see, considering obviously when you look at the history of North Farmington, I mean, this is a team that really had some issues. I mean, they had some issues. And, you know, obviously what didn't help was Ryan Shelby getting hurt. Um, but they had some really odd games last year where they were just shockingly blown out in some of them. So without further ado, here is North Farm to coach John Herstein here at the podium talking about the Raiders. Hi, everybody. My name is John Herstein. I'm the head football coach at North Farmington High School. To my right is P.J. Gardner, Robert Bridges, D.J. Green. To my left here is Ryan Shelby and Thomas Thackety. A um, couple of thoughts about this. First off, we open up with Groves. We're so excited about that opportunity and to play another team from the OAA. And it's great to hear so many teams that are playing another OAA opponent to start the year. And to the teams that are going out of conference, out of the OAA, we wish you guys nothing but luck. Represent our league with class, with pride, and, uh, and really uh, go out there and, and, and show them what the OAA is made of. Uh, a little bit about our team. Uh, we've had a good off season, much like all of you guys. I'm very, very proud of the effort that the young men have put into the weight training. We know it's demanding, uh, the conditioning and all those things, but I feel as though we're more prepared than what we've been in the past. So that's very exciting. Uh, uh, our staff, our coaching staff, I feel like has worked well to prepare the guys. Obviously you heard from Coach Harrington earlier, you know, what could be better than to have Coach hanging around, you know, uh, throwing out one-liners and all that type of stuff. And obviously some of the wisdom that he shared with you guys. I'm just grateful he didn't give away any secrets about our offense, the hurry up, no huddle, triple option that we're putting in this year. So, uh, you know, anyhow, um, in all seriousness, you know, this league is really special. A lot of great teams, a lot of really great coaches. And obviously when you look around the room, you see a lot of talent. We hope everybody stays safe and go Raiders. When you look at the Raiders this year, players to watch for obviously Ryan Shelby. He got hurt last year with the ACL injury. Um, came back, um, just really wasn't the same after that, but um, he's back. Of course, I had Coach Hurston on the podcast. We talked about, um, we talked about um, how Ryan Shelby's been doing. Also, they got players like Robert Bridges, one I'm watching for. I know they're high on Brandon Rice. Um, PJ Gardner's another one to watch. Um, Vinny Lee's another one. Um, DJ Green. Duke Blanche and TJ Alexander are players to really also watch out for, for North Farmington. So when I talked to Coach John Herstein um, on the podcast, we talked about um, we talked how everything's been, obviously. We had a great conversation about that. It'll be on the um, blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. But I also caught up in an interview with Coach John Herstein on the on the um, talking about the state of the Raiders. I got the coach of the Raiders, John Herstein, here. Coach, um, we were on the pod last week. We talked a lot about North Farmington. How has everything been for you this offseason? It's been really good. I thought the kids have done a terrific job throughout the weight room and uh, really the whole offseason program going all the way back into the start of the second semester from the weight room to seven-on-sevens to conditioning, the whole thing. So I've, I've been very proud of the young men that have committed themselves to that. Talk about Ryan here and your schedule. Obviously, we talked the schedule, and, and it's tough. I mean, talk about how Ryan is and how the schedule's been. Yeah, so obviously the schedule's uh, it's a tough schedule. We like it, though. You know, open up with Groves and follow up our second non-conference game against uh, Caledonia. So we get to play a couple of the top teams in the states in their divisions. And, uh, you know, and as far as our quarterback, you know, getting Ryan Shelby back has really been, uh, has been great. He's done a fantastic job this offseason getting his legs back underneath him, uh, 
you know, really competed well with baseball and, and, and made football a priority too, uh, preparing his team and preparing himself. Uh, had a strong seven on seven uh, 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 league and, and all that stuff over the summer. What are the invitations here, coach? To finish. I think finishing's the biggest thing for us. We've been in some close games over the last couple of years. We're going to find a way to close them out, finish strong. Thank you real much, coach. Thank you. When you look at North Farmington this year, questions of depth remind me of when you look at North Farmington. Obviously, when you look at program strength, that's another concern I have is program strength, obviously, for the Raiders. I mean, it's important for this team to stay healthy, especially with the schedule they got. Now, when you look at the schedule they got, there's one team that's not on there that is really odd, and that is North Far and that is Farmington, their arch rival, of course, um, how the league's set up and all that this year with North Farmington in the um, – in the blue and then Farmington in the white. You know, it's unfortunate that the Farmington Cup game couldn't be played last this year because of, you know, with the with the divisions and all that. Um, I did go deep in detail with um, Coach Herstein about the um, reason why he gave me a great explanation about it on the podcast. So when you look at the schedule, they play Groves. That is, of course, a um, Special Olympics game, obviously. They are doing something to honor Special Olympics at Ron Holland Field. Um, that'll be a really interesting matchup. I think that could be an upset trap, you know, for Groves if they're not careful. I mean, obviously last year those two teams played. Um, Groves won that one in Beverly Hills a year ago. So that'll be really interesting there um, between those two teams. I mean, those two teams know each other quite well. Both staffs know each other quite well. That should be a really interesting game coming up between the um, Falcons and the Raiders. Um, week two. Go out to Caledonia. Caledonia's opening up their new field, new stadium. And I remember watching on TV 10 last year, well, up in Caseville, when Caledonia put 68 on them. I still, it still mind boggles me to this day that Caledonia, of course, Caledonia last year went to the Division I state finals, now in Division II this year. But it, it was mind boggling to me to see a John Herstein defense give up 68 points. That's the most in Raiders history that they have ever allowed to, a, to, a, to an opponent. I mean, I mean, like it was just mind boggling how Caledonia, what they did to North Farmington, which is absolutely insane. I mean, just, just shocking. I mean, so now North Farmington has to go west up 996 to Caledonia take on the Fighting Scots who are opening up their new field. I mean, it's going to be a difficult matchup for North Farmington um, in that matchup, especially with the travel. Now, what does help um, is, of course, the coaching staff. If they went to Traverse City a couple years ago to play Traverse City, um, Traverse City Central in the playoffs, um, no, Traverse City West in the playoffs, I mean, like, it was a really interesting matchup for um, North Farmington. So they do have experience going to either the west side of the state or the north part of the state. You know, so it'd be really interesting that matchup between the, between North Farmington and Caledonia. Week three, they take on Seaholm. It's a rematch, of course. Seaholm, um, North Farmington lost that game last year at Ron Holland. Um, now they go to the Forest. Um, that'll be really interesting there. Um, clash two different styles between the Raiders and the Maples. Um, that could be a really interesting game right there. Um, week number four, they take on Troy Athens and. North Farmington did knock off Troy Athens last year. Uh, it was a good win for them at the time. So that'll be really interesting how that matchup goes there between the Raiders and the, um, and the um, Red Hawks. Week five, North Farmington goes to Troy. And that was a nine nothing game last year. Um, North Farmington was down their third string quarterback in Mill Coleman, who um, who is no longer with the team. He transferred to Wald Lake, um, tra transferred to Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Um, but they shut out Troy, and Troy's a heck of a defensive team. And to do it with a third-string quarterback, that says a lot. You know, gives credit where credit's due to that program. Um, so that'll be really interesting over at Troy between the Raiders and the um, Colts in that one there. Week number six, it's Oak Park. I mean, <coughs> I mean, we know the history. I mean, the legendary rivalries between Harrison and Oak Park. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup between those two teams. I'm curious to see how that matchup is going to be between the Raiders and the um, Knights. Week 7, it's Pontiac. Um, I'm not sure if it's their homecoming game or not, but it'll be really interesting 
between the two between the Phoenix and the Raiders. I mean, like North Farmton, obviously, if healthy, you know, they it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. Week eight, it's Oxford at Oxford. And this is gonna be a difficult matchup for um coach for Coach John Herstein and in the in the team. Going up to Oxford to take on a Wildcat team, I think it's gonna be well improved this year under Coach Jack Line. Um, it'll be very interesting there. And then week nine, North Farm that goes to Bloopy Hills to take on the Blackhawks. I mean, this is going to be, I mean, last year, Bloopy Hills win the North Farmington, won that game. So now, Bloopy, so now North Farm has to return the favor, go to Bloopy Hills, take on the Raiders, and take on the Blackhawks. So it'll be very interesting to see how that matchup goes. So when you look at North Farmington overall, very difficult schedule for them coming up this season. I know all the good folks at Farmington TV 10 are going to have, are going to, Cover a lot of Raider games, obviously. Um, so they're going to be. So it'll be very interesting to see how North Farmington does this year. When you look at the Raiders, um, I think they're going to be better the, this year than they were last year. But you know, if they stay healthy, if they don't stay healthy, it could be some trouble. So the key for them: stay healthy, especially Ryan Shelby, because you know they are a much different team with Ryan with a healthy Ryan Shelby than they are without a healthy Ryan Shelby. So that's going to be the key this year for North Farmington this year is can Ryan Shelby stay healthy? That's going to be the key. And can they finish games? That is a big time question when I look at North Farmington coming into the season. Now let's go from the Raiders to the Knights. Of course, Oak Park last year went 0-9. I mean, they were in the white division, played in a tough division, obviously. So when you look at the Knights, there's nowhere to go but up. I mean, obviously you drop down a division, you're in the, you're in the blue this year. I mean, like, there's a lot of questions with Oak Park. I mean, Oak Park has been basically the great unknown. So here's Oak Park coach Greg Carter at the podium talking about the Knights. Again, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Greg Carter. Um, going into my 14th year as a head coach at Oak Park High School. Um, there's been a lot of ups and downs in our program, but thanks to these young men that are standing beside me, uh, we're looking forward to having a great season. Uh, they've prepared unbelievably. Uh, they've been tremendous leaders for our kids in our program. Uh, we've had a chance to get it back in the weight room and do some things, and, and I think it's going to pay dividends. Uh, uh, Coach Harrington, I know when you started off your speech, you said a lot of old guys. I know you were referring to me, but that's OK. Uh, it was a pleasure playing against Coach Harrington for all those years. One, one year at the Poor's, several years, of course, at Oak Park. And um, we always knew that they were going to be definitely prepared and an outstanding program. Um, let me introduce some of the players that are with me. Uh, Demarius Harvey, who's a senior uh, linebacker offensive line. To my right, uh, William Reed, sophomore offensive and defensive lineman. And Tayshawn Thomas, a junior offensive lineman. Um, the OAA is, is, you know, is demanding, and uh, we've humbled ourselves. Uh, we uh, have done a lot of things in preparation for this upcoming season. We're looking forward to the challenge of playing so many great teams. Uh, we open our season up against uh, UAD, so we'll try to represent the OAA the correct way. Uh, it's a blast to be coaching. 14th year here at Oak Park is coming up. I'm not going to tell you how many years I've been coaching in total, but got to love this stuff to do it. So thank guys for, from the media for being here. It's good to see your faces. And everybody have a safe season and a successful season. Other players to watch when you look at Oak Park. I mean, Artel Greitens, one of the guys to watch at wide receiver and DB. Rondre Austin's another player to watch this year. I mean, Quentin Blakely at DB. Deion Cleary at DB. And Rashad Lewis, obviously, up front. So when you look at the Knights, you know, there's a lot of questions with Oak Park. I mean, I've noticed in the offseason during the seven on sevens, they look a lot better. Um, I've, I've heard a lot of good things about the Knights. So I caught up with Coach Carter to see, to go more in depth when talking about his, his Knights after what happened last year. <laughs> I got Oak Park coach Greg Carter here. Coach, you're in a new division this year. Um, How has everything been this offseason for you guys? A lot better. We've been uh, working extremely hard. We've got a lot of really good kids that are buying in. So we're excited. We're trying to rebuild our program uh, you know, to where it once were, was. And so we've got some work ahead, but we've got great kids, and I think they'll be able to do it. Talk about your schedule. It's a tough schedule. we got UD to start off. Um, how is that? How's the schedule looking for you guys? 
Yeah, it's, it's tough. You know, like everybody else's schedule is tough. Uh, have UAD, Oxford week two. We got uh, West Bloomfield week nine in our regular season schedule, you know, in the middle. And so we've got to be prepared each and every week, you know, to play uh, tough games. And we know we know it's coming. What are the expectations here, Coach? Uh, to get a lot better than we were in the past couple years. So uh, the kids are, are buying in. Uh, I think we've recovered our work ethic. We seem to have lost it along the way. Uh, but the kids are excited about playing. So, I, you know, I don't do predictions, but I think we'll be competitive in each and every game. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. When you look at Oak Park, a lot of people look at the success that Coach Greg Carter's had in the past. Last two years have been 3-15. and 15. That's got to change if, um, if Oak Park wants to turn this thing around, obviously. When you look at, of course, they have not been the same team since that game against um, Warren D. LaSalle in the Division II um, State re in the Division II state semifinals, of course, I remember that year, that team when they went 0-6 in the regular season, but then they had that deep postseason run, you know. So that'll be something to really watch for when you look at Oak Park. Um, the schedule this year looks daunting. Of course, Coach Greg Carter loves to play difficult schedules. I mean, they open up the year at UOD Jesuit to take on the Cubs. That is a difficult matchup to open up with. Obviously, UOD has a lot of proven talent on that team. It's a close drive for Oak Park. I mean, it's only separated, I think, by about like about five, six miles um, from Oak Park to UAD Jesuit. Um, so that's going to be a very difficult matchup for, um, for Coach Carter and the Knights taking on a very good Cubs team. And then September 1st, get to go up to Oxford to take on the Wildcats. Man, that's going to be a difficult matchup for, uh, for Oak Park. And the reason why I say this is because you look at what happened last year, what Groves had to do. When they went up to Oxford, they ended up losing that game. That was one of their um, few losses last year. And Oak Park, they went to Lake Orion last year and just got, you know, shellacked by the Dragons. I remember that one. I mean, but it's going to be a tough matchup for the Knights going up, up north into Oakland, going up north into um, north of 59, taking on a very good Wildcat team who's, who's going to be much more experienced this year. So Oak Park, two top match, matches to start the year. Um, against UD Jesuit and also Oxford. Then they get in the league play. They take on Troy Athens. Um, that'll be an interesting matchup. I mean, I think that'll be, you know, I'm curious to see how Oak Park is after the first two weeks. That's going to be the key indicator where Oak Park season is going to be. Is I think that's the game of the year, I think, for Oak Park is can they win the Athens game. And then September 15th, they take on Troy. And that's going to be an interesting matchup. I mean, clash of two different styles. I mean, Oak Park likes to go up and down. Troy, we know, is very stout defensively. Offensively is going to be where I'm curious to see how that one goes for them. Um, and then week five, take on Avondale. And this is going to be an interesting matchup. It's, if it comes down to an athlete versus athlete game, that could be very, very interesting because both teams have athletes. Both teams have, you know, and I think this could be very interesting. I mean, what scheme works? Is it going to be Oak Park with the spread look or is it going to be Avondale? with the wing T formation that they're going to run this year under Coach Bob Myers. So that's something to really, really watch for this year when you look at the Knights. Um, September 29th, they go, they take on North Farmington. Another difficult matchup, obviously. You look at, of course, the coaching matchup between um, Coach Greg Carter and Coach John Herstein. You got to go back to the days of DePores. You got to look at the days of and slash Oak Park against the days of, of Farmington's Harrison, obviously, when you look at the coaching staffs of each team. Um, very interesting matchup, coaching matchup there between those two teams. Um, so October 6th, they take on Ferndale. I mean, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Ferndale, has, they got a lot of athletes. They got a lot of proven athletes on that team. Experience, experience, experience. So that'll be really interesting there in that matchup. Week 8, they take on Seaholm. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Coach, Coach Greg Carter should know the beer pretty well. Um, of course, Seahome, we know what they bring. I mean, like, so it'll be really interesting how that matchup goes. And then week nine, they take on West Bloomfield. This is going to be a difficult matchup for the Knights, especially with the experience West Bloomfield has. Got a quarterback in Raekwon Nance. You have proven athletes everywhere. Kari Jackson at linebacker. You got, I mean, they got so much, so many athletes. I mean, like, it's going to be a difficult match for Oak Park. I'm um, taking on a really, really good West Bloomfield team. So, if for Oak Park, if they want to get to the playoffs this year, they're going to have to earn it this year. So, that's something to really, really watch for when you look at um, Oak Park is 
can the Knights, you know, get back to the dominance they've been? If they can, this could be a playoff team this year. If, you know, and I think that's going to be the key. Can they build the program back? Can they get program strength back? They've got to find a quarterback. They've got to, I mean, quarterback, running back, big question marks I have with the Knights this season. I mean, they got the skill players. They got the skill players. It comes down to is can they get it up front and can they get the quarterback and the running back in the game situation? They can do that. I think Oak Park can be a postseason team. They can surprise some people in this division. I mean, I've, a lot of people have said about Oak Park is this is the great unknown because you don't know what to expect with Oak Park. You know, they could be very good or they could really struggle. I mean, that, that is the big difference here when you look at the Knights this upcoming season. It, they are the great unknown. So we'll see what happens with Oak Park coming into the season. So let's go now from Oak Park. Let's go to Seaholm. Of course, Seaholm last year won the blue title. I mean, they shared the blue title with Farmington, but they um, ended up staying in the, in the blue division this year. So when you look at Seaholm, a lot of curiosity with the Maples. They got the skill players are coming back. Lions a big question mark. So here's Seaholm at the podium. Okay, well thank you to Rochester for hosting us. Um, I'm Jim Clausen. I'm part of uh, Birmingham Seaholm under Coach DeWald who's been with us, uh, or been the head coach for 12 years. Um, we hope everybody stays healthy over the next several weeks. The rigors of the camps, uh, coaches and staff, uh, please take your uh, water, do your best to stay good. And we hope everyone has a tremendous season. Uh, Seaholm had a really good off-season program. Um, and a productive summer so far. Uh, we brought with us um, seven seniors. We have Luke Thurswell, offense and defensive line. Um, Jesus. Blake Baldner, offense and defensive line. Luke Johnson, offensive line and linebacker. Sean Emerson, running back and uh, DB. Uh, Colton Kinney, QB1. We have Grandin Kinney. Um, running back and linebacker, and then Kyle Robbins, uh, D, uh, sorry, DB, and uh, one of our slots. Um, I'd like to thank everybody coming today, and uh, look forward to another great season with this great American game. Thank you. When looking at Seaholm this year, players to watch for, obviously you got both Kinney brothers, Colton and Graydon Kinney. Colton at quarterback, Graydon at, at running back slash linebacker. Kyle Robbins, another guy to watch for as well. You also got Jack Lewis, um, a linebacker. I mean, he could, also another running back. Blake Baldner, Luke Johnson, Luke Durrell up front. Um, I mean, Penn Roberts at linebacker. Akram Eshmerly up front as well. And Andrew Fetter is another guy to watch for up front. Now, when you look at Seaholm, the issues they've had, um, obviously you look at, of course, lines a question mark for them, but also – the Groves issue. We're going to talk the Groves issue in a minute here. But I did talk to D-Wall. D-Wall was not at media day. So I did catch up with Coach Jim D-Wall on the podcast. Now here, I'm Sammy Tamini here. Um, this week we got Seaholm Coach Jim D-Wall. Coach, um, I see you were working out. And working out. I mean, like, how is everything doing? I haven't talked to you in a while. Things are going well, yeah. You caught me during a workout, so. Oh, cool off my heart right here. <laughs> Everything's going well. Summer's going really well. Um, kids are working hard and looking forward to this season. Talk about last year. I mean, you went eight and three, three and one. The blue had a really tough loss to Groves. Um, we're going to talk Groves yeah. in a couple minutes. Yeah. So, talk about recapping last season a little bit for you. Well, I thought we had a really good team last year, and uh, I really did. I thought we were, you know, we had a good combination of being big and strong up front, but with some skill positions and. Obviously, it reflected on our record. Um, you know, losing in the second round Groves there, you know, it's not fun, but um, it's frustrating. But they they got us, and uh, you know, we were hoping to go a little a little further than that. But uh, chips fall where they fall, right? Yeah, they do. I mean, like, and you know, we're gonna talk Groves in a couple minutes here. I mean, like, because I've looked at a and it's a real rough trend for you guys. I mean, like, you know, so we're gonna talk about that rivalry with Groves and um, your initial thoughts. Um, talk about, of course, your team. Obviously, the Kinney brothers, Colton and Graydon, um, you know, what they've been for you guys this this um, off season and also this season. Yeah, they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're extremely smart football players. 
Um, you know, uh, athletics is a huge part of who they are uh, through baseball and football and um, they're students of the game and they're fun to coach because it's really like having a second coach on really both sides of the ball out in the field. So, you know, they do a really good job of, you know, understanding the game plan, memorizing the game plan and then hopefully, uh, you know, executing it. Um, talk about, of course, when you look at the Veer. I mean, like, the Veer is one of the most lethal offenses in, in the state of Michigan. Um, any other players, you know what I mean, like, any other impact players that we need, that OI Nation needs to know about when you look at Seahome? Yeah, well, we have Sean Emerson uh, coming back for us. He's, a, he's just the all-football kid, um, and he's, uh, he's been a slight. He actually started this first game as a freshman for us and blew his knee out the very, very first season or the very, very first series of the first game. Yikes. So he missed, he missed that whole freshman year and he had a good sophomore year and he had a good year last year. This should be a senior. We're moving him to our, what we call our B back, our running back position. He was a stop for us and he's a safety. Kyle Robbins, another kid that we pulled up as a freshman later on in his freshman year to, to help us out with some depth. And, uh, you know, he's a, you know, he's, Extremely athletic kid, uh, multiple sport kid, um, another smart kid that understands what's going on on both sides of the ball. So, you know, those guys are, are doing a really good job and, you know, look forward to see what they can do. How's, how is the line up front? I mean, obviously, when you look at Seahome, one of the things I've been very concerned about, you know, when I've looked at my notes and everything has been, you know, of course, up front, the offensive line, the defensive yeah. line. I mean, yeah. also depth well, and program strength has been one of my concerns. Yeah, we uh we're we lost a lot up front. I'm not gonna lie, from last year. So we have a work cut out to fill those positions out. Um, but we have uh, Luke Thurswell and and uh, Brad, uh, excuse me, uh, Blake Paulner. Um, you know, the returning starters on the offensive side of the ball, and they're gonna have to we have to rely on them to go a little bit more two ways this year. We have some other guys that are gonna be seniors that can come up. Luke Johnson's a guy that we can go. Akram, Elshin Arby can be a guy up front for us. So we have some guys that we can place him, but no, no doubt that's going to be, you know, a big concern for us moving forward. Um, before I let you go, coach, um, what is your um, expectations heading into the season um, for Sea home football? Well, I expect us to make the playoffs. I really do. I think we have a, enough veteran leadership and enough veteran guys on the skill side. And obviously everyone's going to say the same thing as we stay healthy. I think we'll be, we'll be fine. I think we should get into the playoffs. Um, I would like us to get into the six, seven win category. Um, and there's going to be some tough competition. There's some other ones that I think we'll be okay in, but uh, um, I, I'm looking forward to it uh, and just see how we gel. Um, I, I, you know, obviously as we talked we have to figure out what's going on up front. And obviously that one is, is going to be uh you know, the depth is going to be big time lacking up front. So we can't, we've got to stay healthy and we got to treat those guys, get them right now so they can make the full season. But uh, I'd, I'd have, uh, I'd be very shocked if we didn't make the playoffs. I would be too. I mean, like obviously when I'm working on my preview for the blog and all that, you know, before I'm, I'm really, really high on you guys this year. Um, Honestly, you know, when I look at Seahome, I mean, like, you know, I think, you know, when you look at the division that you guys are in, I think it's a winnable division for you guys. And it's going to be challenging. Yeah, it's going to be challenging. Yeah. But no question. It'll no be fun. We have, a third, we have a quarterback that's going to be a third year starter. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's a lot of that. You know, that. It's huge. I mean, I can't. A first year quarterback, and it takes him three games to start to understand what's going on when those bullets are flying a million miles an hour. But. You know, Colton is going to be a third-year starter, and, and like I said, he is, he is just as smart as any coach we have out there. He's, uh, he knows what's going on defensively. He understands what they're trying to do, and uh, so it's, it's fun to coach him. It really is because he, he gets it, so it's, it's, that'll be exciting to see what he does. I am looking forward to seeing Seaholm this year. I, I will see you at Media Day coming up. Um, thank, you, co thank you, Coach Jim Dewall, head coach of Seaholm Maples. Um, thank you for calling Thanks, in. Sammy. Appreciate you. you. Appreciate you calling. See you at media day, my friend. Take care. See ya. Yep. Bye. Yep. Bye. So now when you look at the Maple schedule this year, obviously it is interesting. I mean, they open up the year with Bloomfield Hills. Um, that is a very interesting matchup. I know the rivalry there between um, Coach Jim Dewall and Dan Loria. Um, they know each other quite well. So that'll be a fun matchup. Two different styles in that matchup. Bloomfield Hills, of course, a team that likes to run the spread. Um, 
see home we know is a team that loves to run the veer. So when you look at that matchup, it'll be very interesting over at Palumpia Hills there. Um, September 1st, they take on UD Jesuits a rematch. Um, after Seahome went won last year in the fourth against the Cubs. And it was a heck of a game between the, those two teams. But Seahome won that one. I think it was 21-20 was the final on that one there. I mean, that was a good game, though. I th it was a great game to watch, too, watching that one. Week three, they, they host North Farmington. I mean, Seahome winning the Ron Holland won that one um, last season. Um, North, obviously, has got Ryan Shelby back. That is going to be an interesting quarterback matchup between Colton Kenny and um, Ryan Shelby. Um, week four, they take on Berkeley. This is another interesting matchup. Um, obviously, talking to Coach Dewald about this matchup here, it'll be very interesting there and that one there. September 22nd, they take on Troy Athens. That's going to be a very interesting matchup there. I, I just think that um, the quarterback match between Parker Sherla and um, Colton Kinney, um, different styles. Curious to see how that one goes. September 29th against Troy, of course. I remember the game last year at, at Seahome when Seahome laid a whooping on Troy. 52 to nothing. <laughs> Excuse me. 52 nothing. That says a lot. You know, considering, you know, Troy has been one of those defensive gurus, very good defensively last year. Had Darius Whiteside on that defense. But the fact that Seahome put 52 on him, just absolutely insane to do against the Coach Tom Callahan defense. I mean, just insane. So that matchup at Troy this year is going to be very interesting between the Maples and the Colts. Um, week 7, they take on Auburn Hills Avondale. Um, again, this is going to be a matchup between the Veer and the, um, and the um, Wing T. It'll be very interesting because Avondale's got a lot of athletes as well. And Seahome, we know that game could be interesting because I think that could be a fun game between Seahome and Abigail, considering, of course, a lot of running is going to be in that game, obviously, in that one. Week 8, take on Oak Park. Um, this should be a very interesting matchup. Clash of different styles between um, Seahome and um, Oak Park. And then there's Week 9. You know, when I look at Week 9 for Seahome, and hearing the frustration Coach Ewald's had, on the podcast. The fact that you're 2-11 since 2013. You lost to him twice last year in the playoffs. I can understand Coach Ewald's frustrations against Arch against their arch rival. The fact that, you know, obviously you look at the Birmingham School District, you know what I mean, with their open enrollment policy, but then you look at, of course, Groves can't see home's number. I mean, 2-11 since 2013. That says a lot. That really says a lot. For Seahome to turn it around, if Seahome wants to make noise, get back to Division II State Final, they were a couple years ago, they got to go through our, their arch rival to get there. And I think, you know, when you look at it here, it'll be very interesting to see how that matchup goes between Seahome and Groves this year. That game's in the forest, which is going to be very interesting. Um... I, I, I think I take it back. I think it's in Beverly Hills this year. So we'll see how that matchup goes between Seahome and Groves. I mean, that's going to be just really interesting. But for Seahome this year, line plays the question mark for them. It's going to come down to is can the Maples find a way, you know, to overcome the Groves problem. That's another one I've got. I'm curious to see how they do. I'm really hot, excited for the Kinney brothers. Really excited for Kyle Robbins. I mean, I think Seahome. They're going to be very good this year. I think Seahome could be a team that I don't think anybody wants to see come postseason time, especially with the offense they run, the Veer. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how this team does this upcoming season. So let's go from Seahome to Troy, Athens. Obviously, when you look at the Red Hawks um, last year, this has been a weird team to figure out. They've been over 500, 10 and 8 the last two years, outscored, more, scored more points than given up. But they haven't made the playoffs the last two years. So here is Troy Athens coach Tom Cook talking about the Red Hawks. First off, I want to say thank you to uh, Rochester Schools and Coach Vernon for putting all this together. Um, I'm Tom Cook. I'm the football coach at Athens High School. Uh, and I have uh, five seniors with me today. Uh, Blake Mangus um, 
is defensive back and running back. Uh, Micah Paberski is offensive line, defensive line. Uh, Parker Trula, our uh, quarterback. Deshaun Knowlton, offensive line and defensive line. And, uh, Hayden Crum, offensive line, defensive line. Uh, they're all seniors, and that's something that um, I think it's going to be a strength for our team this year is, is our senior leadership. All of these guys have had uh, a great summer and put in a tremendous amount of work. Um, and and we're, we're looking forward to uh, kicking off the season. We start against uh, Frazier week one, uh, and we're looking forward to you know, competing in the blue this year against uh, some tremendous teams. So thank you, everybody, for, uh, for having us, and uh, good luck to everyone throughout the season. When you look at Troy Athens, they got a lot of experience. They've got a lot of, you know, when you look at it, the stats, the stats don't lie. Players to watch for. Parker Sherla, obviously. Obviously, Charles Robinson's another one I'm keeping an eye on, along with Anthony Asher. Um, Elliot Boots, another one I'm keeping an eye on as well. I mean, Michael Pobrowski up front as well. I mean, Troy Athens, they got the makings of a very good, of a good team coming back. So when you look, when I talk to Coach Tom Cook, see how this team's been, they did make a big change this offseason. It was from an administrative standpoint. They have a new principal in Vernon Burden, who is a football junkie, who is their new principal at Troy Athens. So I caught up with Coach Tom Cook to talk about the impact of the Vernon Burden impact and also the team over at Troy Athens. I got Troy Athens football coach here, Tom Cook here. Coach, um, you know, last season you've been, last two years you've been 10-8 the last two years, but, um, you know, scoring more than allowing. So talk about what is, what's it going to take to get you guys in the postseason? Uh, you know, I think... Um you know, some of the work that we put in, especially our seniors, uh, you know, standing behind me uh, this off season. Um, I think really what it boils down to is, um, you know, we, we play a tough schedule uh, and, um, you know, in those tough games, like how do you respond to adversity? And I think, uh, you know, our guys uh, have put in a lot of work and I think we've got like a good solid senior, uh, you know, uh, senior core this year that are, uh, that's gonna lead us to hopefully uh, a successful season. Talk about Parker, obviously a quarterback. I mean, like, and the Vernon Burden effect. Obviously, he's the new principal at Troy Athens. How has he been for you guys in, the, in this off season? Uh, uh, Parker, or, or the principal, coach? new principal. Oh, uh, he's been fantastic. Uh, he's he's shown up to our workouts. Uh, very supportive. Um, you know, uh, he's he's a type of guy that I don't think he he loves uh, just sitting in the office. Uh, for too long at a time. He gets a little uh, antsy, so uh, he's been out. He's met all the guys. Um, he's, he's been fantastic for us. What is the expectation this year, Coach? We're going to, you know, uh, we're going to compete in every game. Um, and I think, uh, you know, hopefully, like, we, uh, uh, you know, we, we find, you know, success in, in the little things, and hopefully that leads to wins. Thank you real much, Coach. Yep, thanks. When you look at Troy Athens, when you look at the schedule that Troy Athens has, um, I'm looking at their non-conference this year, and I've looked at last year's stats. When you look at the teams that they're playing this year, they want to combine five and 40. So that's going to be interesting to see how that impacts, you know, when it comes to the postseason for Troy Athens. So they open up week one with Frazier. I mean, like Frazier last year was a team that went one and eight. Um, so the Ramblers, we know what they have. Um, then week two, um, they take on Berkeley. Berkeley went two and seven last year. So, you know, when you look at the schedule here, I think that Berkeley game looks tough for Troy Athens. I mean, like, that does, that's going to look really, really tough. And then, of course, they get in the league play. Um, week three, they take on Oak Park. Um, when you look at that matchup here, that's going to be interesting to clash two different styles between both those two teams. So it's a clash of different styles there. Week four, they take on North Farmington. Um, difficult matchup for Troy Athens. Uh, it's gonna be, I'm curious to see how, um, how they match up, especially in the outside. The secondary is a concern for me when I look at what Troy Athens. Um, in that one, especially linebackers going up against a proven quarterback like Ryan Shelby in that matchup. And then week five, take on Seaholm, dealing with Veer. Now, what helps Troy Athens in this matchup is they got the up, people up front. You know, so I'm curious to see how they handle the veer 
in that matchup. So that's going to be difficult in that matchup. I mean, especially with the skilled players that Troy Athens, that, um, that um, Seaholm has. So, so Troy Athens, they're going to have to really play well in that game against Seaholm. I mean, it's not going to be an easy game, to say the least, there in that one there. Week number six, they take on Pontiac. Um, Pontiac, obviously, you know, trying to put, put, put the program back together in the thick of it. I think Pontiac could be a player this year. Um, we'll see how that matchup goes between the Phoenix and the um, Red Hawks. Week seven, take on Royal Oak. I mean, it's going to be interesting because, you know, you look at Royal Oak, I know the direction they've been at. They, they've had their struggles. Um, Troy Athens, that could be a sneaky good game. I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm curious to see how that matchup goes between the Ravens and the Red Hawks there. Um, week number eight, this is the rivalry game with Troy. Um, last year, Troy knocked off Athens. Um, and that game was at um, Troy. This year's game's at Athens. Um, so this is going to be a very interesting matchup, especially when you look at this rivalry. Obviously, you look at, of course, um, Troy, of course, I know calls Troy Athens to school down the road. Um, and then, of course, and vice versa. So I'm very curious to see how the battle between Shane Hines and Vernon Burden is going to be in that one. That could be really interesting, especially putting Vernon Burden, who's the new principal at Troy Athens, into that rivalry. And then they close out the year week nine with Utica Ford um, over Adam. I think it's at Runkle Field this year. Um, obviously, Ford went one and eight last year. And, you know, playing Utica Ford, you know, playing that schedule, you know, when I look at Troy Athens this year, I think they're going to have a good team. I just worry about that schedule, especially in non-conference. When you're playing against teams that are coming in, rank five, coming in with a 5-40 record, that's a concern for me. And I think with Troy Athens, the bar's high. I think they, if they can get to the playoffs, it'd be great. But there's a lot of questions when I look at Troy and Troy Athens this year, um, particularly Troy Athens with the schedule they have in non-conference. It worries me. And I think that's something to really, really watch for when you look at with Troy Athens this year is their first thing this year, they've got to get by Troy. If they can get by Troy, you know, that will help things. But they've got to win the games they're supposed to win and then also, you know, win some games in the conference. They didn't win a conference game last year. So, you know, they have to win a game in this division, I think, if they want to get in the postseason this year. So, so a lot of questions with the Red Hawks this year with Coach Tom Cook's team. A lot of questions when you look at the um, Red Hawks heading into the season. So let's go to our last team here, and that is the Troy Colts. Of course, Troy last year, when you look at Troy, a lot of success. I mean, 12 in them, um, you know, they, they were postseason team last year. Defensively, they're very good, 44 points allowed, minus um, Seaholm, North Farmington, and Southfield. You know, pretty good year for Troy defensively. So now you lose a player like um, Darius Whiteside, that's a big loss for them. So. Here is Coach Chris Frazier at the podium talking about the Colts. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name's uh, Chris Frazier. I'm the head coach here at Tri. So I brought uh, four young men with me, two seniors and two juniors. So all the way to my right is junior Jalen Peacock. Uh, next to him, number 24, senior running back, four-year starter, Nolan Block. Next to me, quarterback, Parker Brandenburg, senior. And last but not least, number 77, tackle, junior Lucas Tick. So obviously we're really excited about the season, but uh, I want to take my two minutes here and just thank everyone here. Not only my guys for how much work they put in, but all you guys for all the work you put in. Without you, without you showing up in the summer, without you grinding two a days, us old guys wouldn't get to do what we like to do. So I appreciate the fact that all of you put in the work that you do. Good luck to every one of you. Stay healthy and enjoy the season. Thank you. Before I talk about, before I had the interview with Coach Chris Frazier here, um, Troy's made the postseason for the last six years, 15 to five in the last two years. Obviously, the postseason issues. We're gonna talk about that. I think that's a concern for me when I look at Troy. Um, players to really watch for: Parker Brandenburg at quarterback, Nolan Block at running back, Nick Stromberg, Lucas Tick up front, Noah Early's one of the guys I'm high on, and then of course there's Jalen Peacock, um, who I expect to play at wide receiver as well as some time at DB. Um, I did talk to Coach Frazier on the podcast talking about Troy football. Um, so that will be awesome to be on the, um, on the blog at sagonbay4650 at blogspot.com as well. 
Um, so here is Coach Chris Frazier. I, had a, I caught up in an interview with Coach Chris Frazier to talk about the state of the Colts and the schedule. I got the coach of Troy, Coach Chris Frazier here. Um, coach, um, obviously we were on the pod a couple weeks ago. Um, talk about how, how it's been from bet between now and the pod, how has things changed between now and then? Well, you know, obviously we're just wrapping up the summer and uh, we're getting excited to do uh, the regular stuff on Monday. So we did some weight testing, so it's good to see the numbers and if they've improved or the kids that didn't improve, you know, they didn't put in the work. So, you know, the coaches are evaluating that kind of stuff and it'll just be another piece of the puzzle for uh, who fits where. Talk about your non-conference. I mean, I've looked at the records and you're, and the teams you're playing are overall record is um, is um, eight and thirty-seven. So talk about that a little bit. Your non-conference. So this year will be good for our non-conference because we didn't play those teams before last year. So we have some tape on them now. So we'll kind of figure out what they're doing, their scheme-wise. So it'll it'll be a little bit more efficient for us, you know, going into game planning this year. So that's what we're looking forward to. What is the expectation this year, coach? Just to compete and you know see how the the score you know shakes out at the end. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at Troy, the non-conference, that terrifies me. The eight, coming in with 8-37 and 37 record, um, obviously they played them last year. So when you look at teams like Macomb, now minus Farmington out of that, they played everybody in their non-conference last year. So they open up with Macomb Lions Cruise North at Troy. Troy, of course, getting a new field. Um, I looked at the design, and and it does it worries me a little bit, but that's beside the point. But they open up the year with Macomb Lions Cruise North, and the and of course last year Troy went into Macomb um, Lions Cruise North and won 14 to three. Um, behind that stellar defense that they had, um, then week two they take on Detroit Mumford, which is Detroit Mumford really struggled last year. I mean, the Mustangs, they're going to have, I mean, the Mustangs, I don't know what they're going to look like in the Detroit Public School League, but they could struggle this year. Um, so that is a team that Troy should be 2-0, and hanging their game with Royal Oak. Um, that is also another home game for Troy. Of course, they got three home games to start the year. Um, of course, Troy last year winning the Royal Oak and won 42 nothing against the Ravens. So when you look at that schedule, Heading into their September 15th game with Oak Park, they should be 3-0. and I mean, they should be 3-0, and but the question for me with that schedule was, will they be battle-tested? That is the big question I have with Troy um, hanging out that game with Oak Park, because Oak Park, you know, is going to be battle-tested with that schedule that they got. So that is going to be a game I'm keeping a really close eye on. I think that game's in Night Valley, um, which is going to be really interesting there. Um, week number... Five, North Farmington at home. Last year, nine nothing, third string quarterback. I mean, it was really tough on Troy, offensively. Really, really tough on them. And then week number six, see home, fifty two nothing last year. The game's at Troy this year though, but they've got to have a bad taste in their mouth from that game last year. Fifty two nothing. That is untroy like. That is really untroy like. And then week number seven, take on Berkeley. I mean, this is going to be an interesting matchup between those two teams. It's going to be interesting to see how that game's going to be. I mean, I know they've had some battles. Troy and Berkeley's had some battles in the past. So that's going to be interesting to see how that one goes. Um, week eight, they take on Troy Athens, the annual rivalry game. Um, I, and Troy last year won that game at, um, at home against Troy Athens, and then this year's game's at Athens. So that's going to be interesting. Of course, I remember the combo on the podcast that I had with um, Coach Frazier. You know, it makes it. I remember he said that it makes it makes it makes a very happy trip to Kroger if you um, beat Athens, and it's a little bit harder if you lose to Athens. So I know that rivalry in Troy is going to be is going it's always tense between those two teams. Um, and then week number nine, they take on Frazier. Um, Frazier last year went one and eight. I mean, Troy, of course, won that game against the Ramblers last year. So, you know, when you look at that matchup, you know, it looks like a mismatch on paper. So when you really look at the, um, the schedule, there, I mean, six, six wins is the highest, you know what I mean? Like, it's the lowest I can see with that schedule because that schedule looks really, really favorable for Troy. 
um, coming in. But will it guarantee a playoff appearance? I don't know. I mean, like, because of the postseason appearances, this could be a team that, you know, I'm not, and I'm looking at the stats, obviously. The three losses last year, um, they were outscored 119 to nothing in those three losses. And that kind of worries me a little bit with Troy is, is that schedule going to toughen them up? That is the big question I have with Troy. Just a lot of questions. Obviously, you know, they do got a lot of experience back up front. But the schedule, I don't know <coughs> if I see that schedule getting them in the playoffs or not. That is a big-time question mark for Troy. I mean, especially opening up with Macomb, Las Cruz North, Detroit Mumford, and Royal Oak. I mean, you know, the 8-37, and that's what scares me with, um, with Troy coming into the season. I mean, that is going to be just the challenge that I see with Troy is can they – overcome this non-conference schedule and if they do you know then if they do they get in the playoffs for third straight year you know then i'm curious to see how they're going to be in division one i mean like but the schedule I, I just don't know when i look at this schedule so when you look at the colts um they got a lot of keys i mean obviously when you look at troy i mean parker brandenburg nolan block we talked about them but the question is how is their schedule going to be Will it be a playoff team? That is a big time question. So when I look at my projections this year in the blue division, I mean, I see, you know, the expectations of the coaches. I know they have Oak Park over them. Um, they have Oak Park, um, a big mystery. I mean, when I look at the, the reason why I left Troy and Troy Athens out, despite the, despite the records, is the schedule they play. That is, you look at everybody else in that division, Seaholm, Oak Park, and North Farmington, they got tough schedules. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Oak Park's probably got the toughest of the group when you look at, of course, having to play Oxford, having to play UD Jesuit, and then having to play West Bluefield. North Farmington, obviously going to Caledonia, and then Seaholm. So when you look at Seaholm, I had them at 8-1 this year, winning the league. The Veers one of the toughest offenses to handle. Um, really, I really like their, I really like both Kenny brothers, um, North Farmington. I had them at five and four, as I mentioned, the schedule is brutal. Um, but I think they're going to do some well. I really do. Oak park is the question mark because when I look at the Knights, um, I just think Oak park with that schedule, you know, if they can win four games in division two, I think it can get in the playoffs. Troy, obviously, I just don't trust that team when it comes to the schedule. They're going to be a good team, but the schedule worries me with them. Same thing with Troy Athens. The schedule absolutely worries me when I look at that schedule. So that's why I have those two teams left out in the playoffs. Now, I know a lot of others are going to say, well, Troy deserves to be in the playoffs. I mean, like, but I just got concerns with that schedule. I mean, you know, I know I'm, I might get criticized by a good folks at Troy and Troy Athens, but I'm just telling you, that schedule worries me when I look at both Troy and Troy Athens. So when I look at the top 10 rankings to start the year, obviously, um, obviously I still got Harper Woods at four. Um, see home I have ranked in the division at eight to start the year, and I think that's a good ranking for see home. obviously. You know, having to overcome Groves, um, looking at, of course, the um, schedule, obviously, I think Seaholm could be a scary team that could be ranked. I think North Farmington's a team that can be ranked that they can knock off Caledonia. Um, Oak Park, you know, if they can overcome their schedule. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see. I mean, like, like I said, with Troy and Troy Athens this year, when you look at the top 10, I mean, people are going to say, well, where's Troy, where's Troy Athens? I mean, the schedule is the one that worries me with, with both those, with those two schools is I know the schedule you know what I mean? The, the, it's, it's, every, it's the overall record of everybody else. That's where you're going to get your playoff points. Obviously, when you get in the playoffs, is how is the success of everybody else in that league. So I'm really concerned about Troy, really concerned about Troy Athens. Um, when you look at those two teams when it comes to the schedule, I mean, that is really the reason when you look at the rankings to start off. Seaholm, obviously ranked eighth, proven experience back for Kinney Brothers. And with North Farmington, a lot of experience back. Their non-conference schedule is brutal. I mean, and then you look at um, Oak Park, you know, they're the great unknown. So that's really going to be the one that you're going to be really looking at when you look at Oak Park. So, all right, I'm going to sign off here. I wish everybody the best of luck in the Blue Division this week. 
Um, we have the white next week. We have the red in two weeks. Um, it'll be on the blog at 2nd by 4650 at blogspot.com. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this week, for coming out, watching the Blue Preview Show, and good luck to everybody this season. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you all next week.